Well, good day, students. The author of our online text has put together this really handy app for demonstrating the central limit theorem. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this app, and then I will give you a homework assignment to complete. So notice with the top panel here, you have the population of scores. So this is your population, and it's a countless number of individuals here. And you can see the scores range from 0 to 32. Now what we can do is randomly sample from this population and compute various descriptive statistics and see how those statistics behave in that random sampling process. So notice here we're looking at the mean and we're going to select five individuals. Now what we're going to do here is select animate and what it's going to do is select five individuals randomly from this population put them in this distribution, that's your sample data, and then it'll compute the mean and plot it here. So let's go ahead and select the Animate button here. So it's one, two, three, four, five individuals, and then you can see the mean is right in here, so there's the mean for those five individuals. Let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five individuals. You can see the mean's gonna be right about there. Okay, so we could go through this and continually animate this, selecting five individuals and plotting the means. So this is the distribution we want to focus on, but let's go ahead and just repeat that 100,000 times and let's see what happens. So notice now we have 100,002 means because we ran the simulation twice before we selected the 100,000 button. And you can see that we have a nice normal looking distribution here. Put the normal curve over it and there you see it. Now also notice you get these skewness and kurtosis numbers. When these are equal to zero, you have a nice symmetric distribution and you have a distribution that forms a nice mound shape, like a bell curve. And these are really close to zero, as you can see here. Now here, they're exactly zero for the population. And also notice that the mean of the means, 16 here, turns out to be equal to the original mean of 16. And then also notice the standard deviation of these means. So remember, this is a distribution of means. The standard deviation is 2.24. Now that's not equal to the 5 up here for the population, but if you take 5 and divide it by the square root of 5, you're going to find something approximately equal to 2.24. So the name for this statistic here, this standard deviation, is the standard error of the mean. It's the standard deviation of these means. And again, where did I get these means? From a random sampling process. I drew 100,000 samples of five individuals. I did that over and over and over again, 100,000 times, and plotted those means in the histogram here, and you notice they form a nice normal curve. And so that's the essence of the central limit theorem. From this random sampling process, you're gonna get a distribution of means that appear to be normally distributed. They're going to have a mean equal to the original mean of the population distribution, and the standard deviation is gonna be equal to the standard error of the mean. In other words, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. And again, n in this case is 5. Now let's take a look at a different type of distribution. Let's go ahead and make a custom distribution here. And let's say we have radically skewed uh, data here. So maybe this is something like on a Quizam where most of the students score really high on the Quizam. We have 32 possible points there. Now let's go ahead and run the simulation again. But now I'm going to boost the sample size to 25. And then let's also get the medians and put the sample size 25 there. And again, let's animate it just to see what it's doing. So we'll have 25 numbers randomly drawn here. And then it will compute the mean for those 25 numbers. And there it is. That's going to draw 25 numbers for the second distribution of medians down there. And there it is. So again, you can see we're just randomly drawing 25 individuals computing the mean for those individuals, and then 25 additional individuals and computing the median for those folks. So let's go ahead and repeat that 100,000 times. And there you have it. So even though we started with a radically skewed distribution up here, we ended up with a nice normal distribution of means. And you'll notice that the mean of the means is 23.23. And sure enough, that's the population mean to start with. And then you'll see the standard deviation here is 1.56. Take that 7.79, divide it by the square root of 25, and you're going to get approximately 1.56. Now notice with the medians, they kind of form a normal curve, pretty close as well. You can see the skewness and kurtosis stats there don't look too bad. Uh, you'll see that the median is 25, and that's the original median. But then you'll notice the standard deviation here is 1.61, and there's no clear relationship between that result and the standard deviation up here. 
So it's only with the means that we're going to get a nice normal curve and find that the mean of the means is equal to the population mean and the standard deviation of the means is equal to that standard error of mean value, which again we can compute from the standard deviation and the sample size. So this is how you can use this app to explore the central limit theorem. You notice there are various other statistics here you could look at as well, but we're focusing on the mean because of these nice properties that it has.